So now we are here. Yeah. So we define parent-child relationship. <coughs> now, based on this simple definition, so let's discuss. There are many operations we can do. Yeah. All right. First, two types of heaps. Yeah. Think about when we organize our data. Sometimes based on ascending order, sometimes descending order. So there are two types. Yeah. So one we call the max heap. Yeah. Max heap, the maximum. The maximum value is at the root. Yeah. So then, you know, other nodes spread below. Yeah. So that's the max heap. The second type, min heap, minimum, min heap. So the minimum value is at the root. Okay, yeah. yeah, because based on these two types, then when we do the sorting, we can have the descending order and the ascending order. Okay, max heap, yeah, so if we use the max heap, we will sort based on ascending order. Yeah, min heap, min heap, yeah, min heap, yeah, so, yeah, descending order. Okay, yeah, all right. But here we only need to discuss the max heap. Yeah. So the other one just similar. Yeah. So we do not need to spend any time on it. Yeah. All right, max heap property. Max p should follow some property. Yeah. So we define this max heap property. So what's the property? All right, that's very simple. Yeah, straightforward. Yeah. The value of the parent child is greater or equal to its left child value and right child value. Yeah. That's the max heap property. Okay? Yeah. But left child, right child, which one larger, smaller, doesn't matter. Okay? Left child, right child, yeah, so either one yeah, could be larger than the other one. Yeah. But the parent, the value of the parent node must be greater or equal. Yeah, equal is fine. Yeah, the, the greater. Yeah. Yeah. That's the max heap property. Yeah. All right. The main property is similar, so you just uh, switch the direction of the inequalities. Yeah. So the value of the parent node is less than or equal to any one of the child nodes. Any value of the child node. Two child possible. Two possible child nodes. Okay? Yeah. Sometimes you don't have right child, right? You only have left child. That's possible. Yeah. And sometimes you don't have any child. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So next, I want to show you a concrete max heap example. Yeah. Right. Look at this one. Yeah. All right. So inside the circle, that's the value. Okay. Yeah. So the number outside the circle, that's the index number. So first you can see we arrange the array elements in following the order, top, down, left to right, that order. So the first index one, now here we ignore index zero element. So index one, yeah, so you put at the root. Yeah. Then two consecutive next two elements you go to the next line from left to right, two, three. Then another level in order. So when you arrange the array indices, you use the natural order. Okay, this way. Yeah. All right. So then the values. Yeah. Values. Here you check the max heap property. The sixteen is greater or equal to fourteen and ten, right? So this triangle it follows max heap property. Then at each tri local triangle. Each local triangle, you need to check the max property. 14 greater than 8 and 7. 10 greater or equal to 9 and 3. Each triangle, local triangle. Okay? 8 greater or equal to 2 and 4. 7 greater than 1. Okay? So if you check all the local triangles, there is no violation of the max heap property, then you get a max heap. Yeah, that simple. All right. Yeah. Here, yeah, because this binary tree is an imaginary binary tree. Okay. Yeah. 
in our storage, you can only see an array. So here I show you the numbers in the imaginary binary tree in the real array like this. Okay. 16 is here, okay, location 1. Then two child nodes, okay, 14, 10, yeah, the so next two, uh, index 2 and 3. Yeah. So for next parent child triangle relationship is like that. Okay, yeah. Next triangle like this. Okay. Then another triangle. Yeah. And yeah. So here you can see. Yeah. When we arrange our array elements like this, there is no hole, right? Yeah, no hole. Okay. And it covers consecutive locations in our array. Yeah. No pointer. Yeah. No reference, no pointer. It's a perfect arrangement, right? Yeah. So this is a simple way. Yeah. We can say this is the simplest way to store a binary tree inside an array. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. So after this example, now maintaining the heat property. Maintaining that means when you do something, think about when you do insertion or deletion, you may violate the max heat property, right? After you do insertion, deletion, then you may have violation in your original max heat. You need to fix the violation problem. Yeah. Here, we look at the fixing operation. Yeah. Fixing violation operations yeah. to recover the max heat property. Yeah. All right. When the heat property is violated due to some operations, insertion, deletion, etc., how to fix it? Yeah. So let's look at that operation first. Yeah. All right. The general P, L, R, the three node triangles. Okay. Yeah. So here, let's assume there is some violation occur within this triangle, okay? Within this local triangle. Yeah. So we want to write simple checking and fixing code on this local triangle. Yeah. All right. Analysis. Yeah. Violation occurs locally. Yeah. We just check local triangle for a violation. Okay? We do not check yeah. So the global way we will we will look at all the local triangles. That's the global way. Okay? Yeah. So we will look at all the possible local triangles. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If there is a violation, that means one of the heap, uh, max heat property inequality, one of the two inequalities may not be hold. Yeah. Yeah. We need to check that first. Yeah. Uh, and here we, we can assume local violation, okay? Yeah. At this point, we do not worry about violations in other places, only in this location. Yeah. We want to fix violation in this local triangle. Yeah. Local fixing operation. Yeah, let's look at that operation. Yeah. After that, we can check violation globally. Okay? Yeah. All the possible local triangles. That's the global checking. Yeah. All right. Local heapify operation. So we call it this, you know, fixing this operation, this local heapify operation. Yeah. So it's a recursion approach. Yeah. Here we write this recursion approach. Yeah. But remember, yeah, after we understand this heap, you know, the whole thing, understand. Remember, at the end, when you need to implement this heap data structure, all the maintenance, yeah, everything, remember. The recursion in approach, you may have a stack. Then your algorithm may not be in place. Okay, when you consider the stack issue, your algorithm may not be in place. You may like to convert it to iterative. Yeah. Yeah, that's another question. After we complete everything, then you can think about how to use iterative approach to implement your heap of operations. Yeah. Not too hard. Yeah. Not too hard. Yeah. While loop, think about. Yeah. 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 
not necessary. Recursion just uh, is easier to understand. Okay, easier to understand. Yeah. These operations. Yeah. All right. First, let's do the checking. Yeah. Let's first. Why we want to check the first violation possibility? Yeah. If a of i strictly less than a of two i, the first possible violation. Yeah. Then what we do? Yeah. So now we create a temporary variable. We call the largest temporary variable. So we store two i left child index two i to this temporary variable largest. <coughs> yeah, that's the first if statement. Else, else, yeah, else. That means no violation, right? Else means no violation. If no violation. The largest temporary variable should hold the parent index i, parent index i. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then the second if statement. Now this time we compare a of largest. Yes. Yeah. Because our goal we want to put a of largest at the root at the at the top of the triangle, right? At the top node of the triangle. Okay. So this time we check for the second violation, a of largest. This time, yeah, yeah, could be i, could be two i. Okay, a of r largest strictly less than a of two i plus one. That's the second possible violation. Now we fix it. Yeah, this time we find that one. So this time we update the temporary variable largest as the. Two i plus one. All right. After that, yeah, after we update, oh yeah, finally we need to copy the data. So this time we haven't copied the data, right? We just do the detection. Okay. So this step, these two if statements, we just check two inequalities to detect the possible violations. Yeah. All right. So after this detection step, now we need to prepare for fixing. You know, data fixing operation. Yeah. This one, let's check if the largest temporary variable its value not equal to i. That means no violation, right? No violation. Then eh? do nothing. Okay, no violation. Move to the next local triangle for the checking. Okay, all right. But if oh sorry, this is a violation case. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, because not equal i, that's the violation case. If equals i, no violation. No violation, we pass to the next step. Yeah, this one is the violation step. So we need to fix it. How to fix? Swap a of largest and a of i root. Yeah. A of largest could be left child, could be the right child. Then that one we need to swap with the value. With the parent value, okay, the parent value. Yeah, all right. So this is the local hippify operation. Yeah, simple local hippify operation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So think about. Yeah, very simple this way. Yeah. yeah any, yeah, a any question about this simple implementation? Yeah, yeah. Some student may feel, how about? The first time when we detect violation, can we do the swap? All right, yeah. So some students may want to say there is an optional way. The first time when you detect violation, you can already do some swap. Okay. Second time when you do detect violation, then then you do another swap. Oh. <laughs> I. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But here, uh, my side. Second time, you can do another possible swap, right? Yeah, yeah. But I want to say this optional way is not as good as our first way. Okay, the second way. Let me compare the efficiency. The first way is slightly better than the second way. Why? The first way you only need to do one swap. Second way you may need to do two swap operations. Okay. The first way only at the end you do one swap, right? 
The second way, there is a possibility you may need to do two swap operations. Why swap operation could be slow? Think about. Usually, a node could store extra application data. We call it satellite data. Okay, a node could store a satellite data. But when you do swap, you need to copy the satellite data. The satellite data could be pretty large, pretty big, right? When you copy large satellite data, then it could be slow. Yeah. So if you can save one swap operation, then it's better. Yeah. Here, just let you know. Okay. Yeah. This way is better than you know two swap way. Yeah. Yeah. You try to reduce the number of swaps. Okay. Yeah. The swaps when you consider satellite data. Each node, other than the array value, it could store other application data, right? Yeah. You use for real world applications. It could store application data. So we call the satellite data. Okay? Yeah. So that concept, satellite data concept. Yeah. All right, yeah. Next. So after we complete this local heapify operation. Now, let's, first let me show you a heap example. Yeah. Max heapify example. Yeah. Here I show you, yeah. so given a, an array, yeah. given an array, yeah. so uh, I'll give it, uh, if the heap, yeah, so first I want to show you, if the max heap property is violated, how do we apply max heapify operation to fix it? All right, here the violation. I put this gray node. That means there is a violation in this local triangle. Uh, four is greater than four, uh, less than fourteen. So that's a violation. We need to fix it. Okay. All right. So now we apply max heapify. Yeah, because we need to after the detection. Uh, the largest temporary variable should store left child value, right? 14. Yeah. So our swap operation should be between these two nodes, 4 and 14. Yeah. That swap operation. Okay. After that swap operation, we move node 4 down by one level, but that gray node still we do not change it to white okay because there is a possible violation at this gray node there is a possible violation we need to check it on its local triangle again okay yeah yeah starting from this node 4 checking local violation yeah. and we detect we find a violation Value A is greater than 4. So we need to another swap operation. Okay? All right. After that green node reaches the bottom, bottom means the leaf level. Okay? Reach the leaf level. Leaf level, no child. No, no possible violation. Then we can make it to white. Okay? Clean. Yeah. So this node becomes clean. Initially, it's dirty. Okay? When it is in gray color, we mean this node is dirty. When we detect a violation, he, max heap max heap property violation, it's dirty. Okay, it's dirty. But when we do a local fix, that dirty node could be you know moving down, but still dirty. Right? Still dirty. Okay. Yeah. At the end, when that dirty node hit the bottom, then it's clean. Only when it hit, you know, yeah. Oh, after the checking, no violation, we can make it clean, okay? After that gray dirty node moves down, at some point, the local triangle, when we do the detection, there is no violation, then it's clean. Then it's clean, okay? So make it white, yeah, white color, yeah. All right, so that's the, the local fix operation. Yeah. Next, building a heap. Now, given an array, so definitely it's not a max heap, right? When an array is given, it's 
you know, most likely it's not a max heap. So we want to do the search some operations to make it a max heap. Yeah. So that procedure we call this building a heap procedure. So how do we do it? Yeah. Here, let me use a simple example to show you how to build a heap from a given array. Yeah. Suppose this is the given array. Okay. Yeah. So uh, arbitrary given array. Yeah. Now we want to, you know, swap the values in a certain way, well organized way, to get a max heap data structure. Yeah. All right. Now, first, we just uh, arrange the array elements in near complete binary tree, following the natural order. Yeah, you know the natural order, right? Yeah. yeah. Starting from top, okay. Uh, level by level, top down. Each level from left to right, arrange your array elements following that natural order. Okay. All right. Then. Then, now, to do that, to do that, okay, all right, we need to fix all the possible max heap violation, all the possible triangles, okay? When we start, we from the lowest level, okay? Bottom up, we do the bottom up checking, okay? And right to left checking. We start from right, right possible local triangle, okay? So the rightmost, at the bottom level, rightmost local triangle is this one, right? Yeah. We, first, we look at the rightmost triangle at the bottom level, no violation, okay? No violation, so that's why we move right to left, okay? Next local triangle is this one, next local triangle. Then, we detect, we find a violation, okay? Yeah, well, I put a star there, okay? Violation. Then we need to run the local heaping file to fix it. Yeah. All right? Yeah. All right. So we fix this part. Okay. After that, bottom up. Okay. We finish the bottom level. Let's move one level higher. And starting from the rightmost local triangle, this one, rightmost, and we f detect, we f find the violation. Yeah. So let's fix it. Run local heaping file to fix it. Okay. So we know. This swap can fix it, this local violation. Okay? After that, right to left, same level, right to left. So the next triangle to check is this one. Okay? We find another violation, and we know swap these two nodes. Yeah, we can fix it. Oh, but we can fix it. Remember, 30 nodes, we need to check all the way down to the bottom, right? Yeah. So remember, when we do that, you you move that dirty node down. You still need to keep checking. Okay. Yeah. So after that, so we finish this one. Then we move another level up. So this is the last local triangle. Yeah. So here it's dirty. You know, node four dirty. Yeah. So do the swap. But when you do the swap. Keep moving down, okay? Keep moving down, yeah. So another level down, another level down. Now you reach the bottom, reach the bottom, yeah. But you finish all the levels, you can see after you finish checking local hippie file, fixing all the levels, all the local triangles, you get a max heap. So this is a max heap. Max heap, okay? Yeah, all right. Yeah. So you get a max heap. Yeah. Ready for heap sort. Yeah. Ready for heap sort. Yeah. So we need to get a max heap first. Then we can apply heap sort. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Then one thing. When you when you build a heap, given an array, when you build a heap, how much work you need to do? Can you estimate how much work you need to do? Yeah. Think about if you need to do too much work, 
there this one this sort may not be a good one you don't need to do too much work yeah. think about if the amount of work you need to do in this step building heap step if you need to do the big theta of n square yeah, yeah yeah big theta of n square there that's too slow that means this step already is too slow remember our goal our goal is big theta of n log n right this is our goal okay but if you bu build a step if it's this slow that means you have no chance to achieve your goal okay you have to drop it yeah yeah so we need to estimate how much cost do we need to build a heap max heap All right, yeah, so, but we need to do a lot of work in order to do the estimate. Yeah. All right, so there, part B. Yeah. Heap node in each level. We need to count how many heap nodes in each level. Yeah. Only when we can count the number of nodes in each level, then we can estimate. We can estimate how much cost building a heap. All right, so let's do it. First, let's count the lowest possible level, uh, yeah, we call the leaf level, yeah. leaf level, okay? Yeah. Number of leaves in a heap, given an array, if we make it a heap, how many leaf nodes? Yeah. Let's answer this question. Uh, yeah. How many leaf nodes? Yeah. First, we want to write of inequality to describe leaves. For the leaf nodes, their indices should satisfy certain condition, right? Yeah. The, their indices should fall into certain range. What is the range? What is the range for the indices of the leaf nodes? So we want to get that an answer first. Yeah. All right. So let's look at the leaf level. Yeah. So the leaf level in this example, you have three nodes here, but two nodes here. Okay. Three nodes two there. The two nodes here because they have they do not have child nodes. They all, they are also leaf nodes. Yeah. So in this example, there are five leaf nodes. Okay. Yeah. Five leaf nodes. Yeah. All right. And we know to describe the leaf nodes, we use this property. These nodes do not have any child node. That's the main property. Okay? Yeah. All right. But how do we describe these nodes do not have the child nodes? How do we describe this one? Yeah. All right. So here, let's look at the parent child relationship. But when we look at a parent-child relationship, we want to look at the left child, not right child. Okay? Yeah. Because the left child, <coughs> you may have the situation, a node, a heap node, may have left child but no right child. Okay? So the left child, you can see, first we get a left child, then right child. Yeah. So they are in so left child, right child, they are in different status. Okay? Yeah. Left child always comes first, then right child. Okay? Different status. Yeah. All right. So then we consider the left child, its representation is A of 2i, left child. A of 2i. Okay? Yeah. Parent node index i, left child node index 2i. Then the question, yeah, we talk about in the first part. How about left child index two i is out of the bound, out of the array bound, out of the array bound? Okay, that's possible, right? Two i is out of bound. The bound is 
the range for array locations uh, are hip hip node locations between one and n. Okay, lowest hip node location that's one. Highest heap location, that's n, between 1 and n. So, so that's the heap location. But this 2i is out of that range, that bound. Okay? Yeah. So that means 2i is greater than n. When 2i is greater than n, the parent node is a child node. Oh, sorry, parent node is a leaf node. Because it does not have left child, okay? It's a leaf node, by definition, okay? So the condition, the range for a leaf node, I should be less than or equal to n. Yeah. yeah, I should be within the range, right? The, within the heap node location range, yeah. The range for the heap lo heap node locations. So i less than or equal to n. But 2i is out of the bound. 2i greater than n. Yeah. So this inequality <laughs> gives us the description of the index i for a leaf node. Let us simplify this inequality. Yeah. Yeah. The index range between 1 and n, inclusive. Okay? All right. Then, so let's get a lower bound for i, n over 2 less than i, divided by 2, okay? n over 2, strictly less than i, yeah. but n over 2 may not be an integer, right? n over 2 may not be an integer, yeah. i must be an integer, yeah. how can we get a lower bound integer expression for i. Yeah. So this time, we want to use the integer expression yeah, as the lower bound for i, index i. So that lower bound is seeding function. Yeah. So seeding, yeah. seeding function, yeah. all right, so this, so here, here I use the flow function, but flow function plus one. Flow function, yeah, so here, yeah, here, flow function plus one, that is the smallest possible i. Yeah, think about that. Yeah. When n is, think about, when n is even, when n is even, yeah, because look at this inequality sign, strictly less than. n over two, strictly less than i, so n is even, that integer number should be plus 1 equal to smallest i. Okay? When n is odd, odd, n over 2 is not an integer. Yeah. So we take a seeding function, that's the same as the flow function plus 1. Okay? Yeah, so you can see both n even odd, the smallest i is Flow function of n over 2 plus 1. Okay, now you can write the range for the leaf node index i. This is the range. Yeah. Smallest location and the largest location for a leaf node. Okay, yeah, all right. So then, can you count? the number of leaf nodes in this range. You know, all the integers in this range. But how do you count the number of integers in this range? Yeah. Let me check. All right, yeah, so here. Yeah. All right, no new messages. OK, all right. Yeah. 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 So can you see that? Yeah. How many number integer numbers fall into that range? This range. How to do the calculation? You have upper bound. You have lower bound. Okay. Yeah. Both equal sign. There. Yeah. So can you 
use some special operation to figure out the number of elements in that range, upper bound, between upper bound and the lower bound. How about the difference between upper bound and lower bound? Use upper bound minus lower bound. Yeah. So the exact number, yeah, be careful. When you do upper bound, won't it be, all right, Jamie, uh, yeah, for your question, n, first, n over 2 may not be an integer, right? Jamie, n over 2 may not be integer, all right? So you need to make sure your expression must be an integer, okay? Yeah, must be an integer. Yeah. So you, you need to give me an integer expression. You can use a floor function, ceiling function to give me an integer expression, okay? Yeah, but do not use n over 2. It may not be an integer expression. Yeah. All right? Yeah. All right. So here it should be n minus the number, be careful, not the lower bound number, the number one smaller than the lower bound, okay? Yeah. The previous number of the lower bound. Do not mi minus the lower bound itself because you take away the lower bound number, okay? You want to include the lower bound number, okay? So you want to minus the one right before the lower bound number, okay? So the answer is use the upper bound n minus the integer right before the lower bound number. That is the floor function of n over 2. Okay, floor function of n over 2. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. So that's the number of leaves, the formula. Yeah. But this one equals 2. Yes. Yeah, this time, yeah, Jamie give, gives me the correct one. Yeah, because this expression, n minus floor function of n over, exactly equals the ceiling function of n over 2. Exact, okay? Exact, equal. Yeah. Yeah. So that, two expressions, okay? Two expressions, the, the same. The same. Okay. Sometimes you you may like to use the first expression. Sometimes you may like to use the second expression. Okay. Yeah. All right. The for, for here we use this formula from our textbook, page four hundred seventy seven in the appendix. Yeah. This formula. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now we get the number of leaves. The formula. Next, now we want to get the, you know, number of internal nodes with the height one. Yeah. So here, we need to use height concept. Yeah. But many students, yeah. So because when I give questions using hip height, many students misunderstood the height concept. Yeah. Height concept. Yeah. So many students. They use their intuition. They start from the root. Yeah. So they feel from the root that you move down a certain levels. That's the height. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they use that concept. Yeah. But that one, uh, we use another concept called the depth. Okay. Depth. Okay. Starting from root, counting down. Depth. Okay. Yeah. Height. We start from ground level. What's the ground level? Ground level, leaf level. Leaf level we treat as the ground level. Okay? Yeah. So here, let me draw a simple example. Yeah. Simple. So try to help you understand the meaning of height. Okay? Yeah. So let's look at this heap. Okay? All right. Look at the leaf. Yeah. First, I draw the leaf. The, these two. And these three, yeah, all right. At the leaf, at these five leaf nodes, we define the height for the leaf nodes equals zero. Okay, height h equals zero. So all leaf nodes they have height zero. Okay, yeah. 
because they are the ground. Okay, all these leaves they are at the ground, no height, okay, zero height. Okay, now we come from leaf, there yeah, above the leaves. Okay, number of levels above the leaves. Okay, all right. Then let me tell you the height one nodes. H equals one. So this node, one level above their corresponding leaves. Okay? All right. These two, yeah. so here, yeah, this one, yeah, this one. One level above, yeah, so here, yeah. Yeah, how about this one? Yeah. Because this one, yeah, yeah. Well, you look at the height, okay? Yeah. Well, you look at the height. How about this one? Yeah. Well, you look at the height. This one. Because it has left child, right child, right? Yeah. And the way you look at the height, you look at it's the left child, right? Yeah. Remember, when we look at the le leaves, Look at the, we look at the left child, okay? We do not look at the right child. So, look, yeah. So, for the height one, we, yeah, because this one is height two. Because through the left child, you can see through this line, the height is two. Yeah. So, this is height two. So, we do not count this as height one, okay? Yeah. yeah. So, this is height one, okay? Height one, height one. All right. Do not, don't come from root. Right? Okay? Yeah. So because when I did the grading before, yeah, when I assign such questions, yeah, so many students come from the root, from from top. Yeah. That's not right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, based on this understanding, let us count the number of internal nodes. So what are the internal nodes? The nodes other than the leaf nodes. Okay, leaf nodes we call external nodes. Yeah. All non-leaf nodes, non-leaf nodes we call internal nodes. Okay, yeah. So height one node must be an internal node. Yeah. So now we want to count within the internal nodes how many of them have height one. How many internal nodes have the height one? All right, yeah, so here, yeah. So let's look at these nodes, height one node, okay? Yeah, yeah, all right. All right, to calculate height one node, so we want to use the similar way we calculate the number of leaves, yeah. All right, so first, number of all internal nodes, yeah. because from the total nodes, you, sub you subtract the number of leaves, you get all internal nodes. So total node number n, the number of leaves, n minus flow function of n over 2, <coughs> then the remaining, the offset part, right? Yeah. The complementary part, the number of internal nodes, the flow function of n over 2. The complementary part, yeah. the number of n over 2 flow function. That's the, the internal nodes including all possible heights. Many different possible heights. Yeah. And uh, height one is just a part of it. Height one is part of it. Yeah. All right. So now we want to count the number of internal nodes with height one. How do we describe its range? The index of the height one nodes. What is the range for it? Yeah. All right. There, so here, their children are leaves. Can we describe height one node as their left child? Their left child. First, they, they must have left child nodes. Okay. But their left child nodes must be leaves. How about that? Yeah. 
all their left child nodes must be leaves. Okay? Yeah? So here, let's use the index of their left child node, 2i, the index of the left child. But this 2i falls into the range of the leaf nodes range. What is leaf node range? This is the leaf node range. Okay? 2i falls into the leaf node range. Okay? So let's simplify the inequality divided by 2. So the range for i. Yeah. So here we get a range for i. Okay? Yeah, range for i. Yeah. Left hand, right hand side, easier to understand. Yeah, because you divide it by 2, it may not be an integer expression. So you take a floor function to make an integer expression. But the left hand side, you may not see it easily. Yeah, because the left hand side, you divide it by 2, then you take the ceiling function. Yeah. Yeah. So that should be the uh, left hand side expression, ceiling function divided by 2, then ceiling function, but we can show. Yeah. So this simplification can be shown. Yeah. So here I do not show you, can be shown math mathematically. Okay? To show it, you need to consider general M, general M mod 4. 4 you consider remainder <coughs> 0, remainder 1, Remainder 2, remainder 3. You need to di discuss all these four cases to show for all the four cases <coughs> this I equality is true. <coughs> then you can show it. Okay? Yeah, here I do not show it. Just to save some time. Yeah. We just use this equality here. <coughs> all right, so now you get uh, this range description. Can you give me the number of internal nodes with height 1? <coughs> that expression. <coughs> that number expression. Yeah. So we can use the, you know, the, the way we calculate the number of leaves. Upper bound minus the number right before the lower bound. Not the lower bound, the one right before the lower bound. Okay? <coughs> so the answer is the upper bound n over 2. Floor function mi minus the floor function of n over 2 squared. The 1 plus 1, so right before the, that one. Plus 1. Okay? The floor function n over 2 squared, floor function plus 2. Yeah, right before that one, that number. <coughs> so this is the number of height one nodes. Okay? Yeah. All right. Next, we want to calculate the number of height h nodes. <coughs> height h, yeah, any height. Yeah. Height two, height three, height four, and so on. Height h, the general height h, number of nodes. Okay? Yeah. And here, before I move to height h, formula here if we want to use the ceiling function of n oh, this is uh, less than or equal if this is not uh, strictly equal okay this is not strictly equal different from leaf leaf case leaf case that's equal okay but for this one not strictly equal okay yeah. because when you check these four cases for some of the cases it's equal for some of the cases, it's not equal. So you should be very careful. Yeah. But inequality is OK. Yeah. Inequality is correct. OK? Yeah. All right. Next, height h, any height. Yeah. We generalize the previous result. Yeah. This time, we consider height h formula, the number of nodes in height h. Oh, yeah. So let me finish this. Uh -huh. So then we are done today. Okay. All right. Yeah. So number of leaf nodes. Yeah. Let's try to find some rule. Uh, so you, you can see some rule. Okay. N minus floor function of N over 2. That's number of leaves. Okay. Then 
height zero. Okay? Then height one, yeah, so the range, the number, n over two, two is two to the first, okay? Two to the first. The exponent number corresponds to the high number, okay? Two to the first, the high number, okay? Then high number plus one, okay? Yeah, the upper bound, yeah, yeah, minus flow function of n over two square. Yeah. Height plus one, all right? Yeah. Now, number of nodes with height h, can you follow some rule, you know, to generalize to height h formula, okay? Yeah. First, the range, the range, yeah? So n over 2 to the h plus 1, okay? 2 h plus 1, plus, yeah. Then upper bound for this i, flow function of n over 2 to the h, n to the h, okay? So the number of nodes for height h, this expression, okay? n over 2 to the h, flow function minus the 1 right before the lower bound. Okay? Right before the lower bound, okay? So minus flow function of n over 2 to the h plus 1. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's the height h formula. Yeah. So you can use this formula to calculate the number of nodes of all heights. Okay? From all possible heights. Yeah. But you have to stop. Okay? When you reach the root, you have to stop. Okay? The root. Yeah. So you need to find the number, the height number for the root. Okay? Height number for the root. Then you stop there at that level. Okay? Yeah. After that, yeah, we can estimate how much cost we build a heap. Yeah. Building cost. Okay? Heap, heap building cost. Max heap building cost. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So this time now we are ready to do the estimate. Okay? All right. So let me leave uh, next time. Yeah. So I have to stop here today. So next time building cost of heap uh, B.2. After that, because after we build a heap, then when we do the heap sort, it's pretty easy. Yeah. Then, because we have done most of the work when, after we build a heap. We have done most of the work. The remaining work, not much. Okay, building the heap. The remaining work, you know, just almost there. Okay, yeah. So we will get the heap so quickly. Yeah. So, so the next time, I estimate I probably I need about uh, thirty minutes. Thirty minutes, so I can, I can fit. Uh, you know, finish uh, this heap topic.